Welcome back to my Learning the East Front series of tutorials. We recently covered basic movement mechanics, but in this video I will cover some specialized topics. Each form of movement in this video will break some rule of basic movement, but not all units can perform these movement types. I will cover in this video strategic movement, one hex movement, and infiltration only. Other types of specialized movement include railroad and flotilla movement, as well as naval and air transport. Another important form of movement is overrun, which I'll cover next. The rules references for this video are primarily sections 11.3 through 11.5 and also 11.9. So let's get started with strategic movement. Strategic movement is a special form of movement that grants units an extra movement allowance. It can only be performed during the movement phase, not the motorized movement phase. Now, what strategic movement does is grant one and a half times the unit's printed movement allowance. So, for instance, a unit with an MA of 4 could move 6, a unit with an MA of 5 could move 7.5. You always retain fractions in this game, especially when it comes to movement, since when using a road you often spend only half a movement point per hex. However, you need to be mindful of a unit's movement capabilities when planning your strategic moves. Most unit types can move their full movement allowance during the movement phase, but note that Soviet motorized units only move half. They can still use strategic movement but only at one and a half times their halved movement. So this unit with a printed MA of four has only two movement points in the movement phase, as opposed to four during the motorized movement phase. But if it uses strategic movement, it will have three movement points at its disposal, since two times 1.5 is three. Also, units which only move by rail or use flotilla movement Units with a gray or blue movement allowance are not eligible to perform strategic movement at all. They have their own movement capabilities. Now, strategic movement isn't free and can't be done by every unit in every situation. There are some restrictions to keep in mind. Most of them are easy to remember when you realize that strategic movement is a quick, non-combat oriented movement. It's the sort of movement a unit undertakes when it expects no enemy contact. So, the first restriction is that a unit must be at least three hexes away from any enemy units. This guy can move, but this guy can't because someone is too close to him. It goes without saying that zones of control don't matter here. Even if the enemy unit doesn't exert a zone of control, for instance this one with its yellow band, it can still prevent strategic movement if it's too close, as in this case. This restriction applies at all points of the strategic move. To begin, end, or at any point along the move, you can't be within two hexes of an enemy unit. You also have to be on a road the whole way. You can't jump on a road and then start strategic moving, such as this guy. Could not do that. It's an entire road move, so he's beginning on the road. You also can't enter a zone of interdiction. Big no-no. Axis players take note. Interdicting likely avenues of approach of Soviet reinforcements is a good idea. Finally, units must be in general supply to, in order to strategic move and cannot move into any hex that would be out of general supply. Moving on to one hex movement. Here's the basic rule. In either movement phase, units can always move one hex except into those specifically prohibited. They can do this even if the movement cost is more than their movement allowance. Of course, you're prohibited from, say, moving into the ocean or an inland lake, because those are prohibited. 
and you can't move from an enemy zone of control into another enemy zone of control. It doesn't matter if you're doing this in the movement phase or the motorized movement phase, you can still perform a one hex move. Note that the ability to do this isn't dependent on how many movement points you actually happen to have. It's simply an ability to move one single hex even though you can't afford the movement costs. Here's an example. Moving into hill terrain during a mud turn costs three movement points. This Soviet unit's movement allowance is halved during the movement phase because it's a motorized unit, meaning it only has two movement points at its disposal. Okay. Nevertheless, it can still move here, even though that costs three, but this is a one hex move and it must cease all movement at this point. Now let's cover infiltration movement. Units eligible for inf infiltration movement can move directly from one enemy zone of control to another enemy zone of control. But this is a one hex move. The infiltrating unit can only move the one hex and then must stop. Furthermore, it costs the unit's entire printed movement allowance to infiltrate. This means that infiltration is prohibited to a unit in any phase where movement allowance is halved. It also means that infiltration can occur only when a unit begins its movement adjacent to an enemy unit, as in this case. Infiltration capable units are those with a yellow movement allowance code. This unit is capable, this unit is not. The rule for motorized units is that they must have a movement allowance of at least seven. So note that this Soviet motorized unit has a white number in a red square as opposed to this axis yellow number on a red square. Cavalry units don't need a, a movement allowance of seven. They just need a yellow printed movement allowance. However, cavalry units are subject to a further constraint. These units can never infiltrate in clear terrain. Infiltration is only possible from and into a non-clear hex. If either is clear, they can't do it. I suppose they need to hide in the woods while moving or something. That tall silhouette on the horizon in the Russian pastures would be too easy a target for machine gunners. So this unit here is in a non-clear hex. It cannot infiltrate to that hex because that is clear terrain. It could, it could also not go there, but it could, however, infiltrate here from an ESOC to an ESOC because both of these are non-clear. And obviously it cannot infiltrate from here to here, but they are both clear. There are some further restrictions on infiltration that apply to all units. First of all, no one can infiltrate during a mud turn. It's hard to be ninja and sneak through enemy lines when your trucks are stuck in the mud and you're making too much noise trying to tow them out. Furthermore, you cannot infiltrate into or across enemy fortifications. This includes strong points, such as here. This unit cannot infiltrate. He's in a Zoc. He can't infiltrate here because of the strong point. Nor across a fortified line, as you see here. This unit cannot infiltrate unless that fortified line were breached. This concludes the short video on these basic uh, movement types. And as promised, the next video will be on Overrun, which is a little more procedure laden. I initially intended to include Overrun in this video, but it would have gone on a little bit too long. So the next video will be exclusively Overrun and will be on the short side, perhaps shorter than this one. But I just wanted to have everything in small, discrete, bite-sized chunks for you guys. Alright, enjoy.